we have one question from uh, chapter quadrilateral class 9th it says abc is a right angle triangle at c so we have one right angle triangle as you can see in the figure this angle c is given as 90 degree further it says that a line is drawn through the midpoint m of the hypotenuse ab clearly the side opposite to 90 degrees the hypotenuse and here ab is the hypotenuse ab being the hypotenuse and m is the midpoint of this hypotenuse that means we have am is equal to bm and from this point a line is drawn through this point m a line is drawn dm parallel to bc and it says it's intersect this line dm intersect ac at point d and in the proof part what we have to prove here is that d is the midpoint of ac we need to prove d being the midpoint of ac in short we have to prove this ad is equal to dc this is what we need to prove so for proving this we are going to apply the property of converse of midpoint theorem so for that we will be considering this triangle it has to be this triangle abc this is triangle abc so we'll be writing in triangle a b c we know that m is the midpoint m is the midpoint of one side the side here is a b and further we know that dm is parallel to bc these two things are given to us so we can write the reason as given so by applying converse of midpoint what we can write is d is the midpoint this is the midpoint of ac or we can also write ad is equal to dc so we got this ad is equal to dc that's the part of the first two proof. In the next part, we can see that we have to prove MD perpendicular to AC. That means we need to prove one of these angles as 90 degree, either ADM or CDM. So let's see, <clears throat> how can we can do this? Here we are going to use the property of corresponding angle. As you know, when two lines are parallel, here this line being given parallel to this, and clearly here AC is acting as a transversal. So we can write these two angles being equal. So what we'll write here, that is angle ADM is equal to angle C. And the reason is corresponding angle angles. So corresponding angles are equal when lines are parallel. Now we can say that uh, ADM is equal to 90. It's because angle C is 90. So I can replace angle C with 90 degree. I've replaced here C with 90 degree. Now that's the part of the second to prove or we can also further add that AD is perpendicular to not AD is DM, right? It's DM. DM is perpendicular to AC. So we have done the second part. In the next part, what we have to prove here that CM is equal to MA is equal to half AB. So let's focus on that part CM is equal to MA first. So CM, CM is this, we have to prove this is equal to AM. So that's possible if we prove these two triangles as congruent. So here the triangle I'm considering is one is this, this triangle, and the other triangle I'll consider is this. Right. We are going to prove these two triangles as congruent. Let's see what information we have. So let's say let's first consider the triangle here. In triangle, one is A, D, M. And the other is C, D, M. Now, in these two triangles, we already know that AD is equal to DC. We know 
the length AD is equal to DC. That's we have already proved here. AD is equal to DC. Further, we know that this angle is 90 degree. That means this is perpendicular. So the, uh, you know that when a line is perpendicular on the other line, it makes 90, it makes 90 degree on either side. That means angle ADM is equal to angle CDM. And the reason is each 90 degree. The reason we'll be writing that they are 90 degree each. Now, there is one more that is DM is equal to MD and that is common. These are common sides, so we can simply write common. Now, once we are done, we can straight away write the triangles being congruent, that is triangle ADM is congruent to triangle CDM. And the reason for this will be, we have taken side angle side, congruency. Once the triangle become congruent from CPCT, we can write here, that is CM, you can write this CM is equal to MA. Now CM is equal to MA, but we need to prove this is MA is equal to half to AB. In fact, we don't need to prove. It's already given that D is the midpoint of AB. So clearly AM will be half of AB, right? So you can write MA is equal to half AB. And you should know the reason here that M is the midpoint. Midpoint of AB. So from these two steps, we can conclude therefore, CM is equal to MA is equal to half AB. And that's why the third part of this question can be proved.